a bushfire raging inside my life. Deep burning anger has come into my heart. I decide not to break things because I've done it before and it doesn't work. Well, there's a bushfire burning inside my heart. I don't know where to go, but I just make a start, sit down.
There's a bush fire raging outside my house. And there's a bush fire raging inside my life. Deep burning anger has come into my heart. I decide not to break things because I've done it before and it doesn't work. Well, there's a bush fire burning inside my heart. To go, but I just make a start. Sit down, well, I sit down. Well, there's a deep, 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 deep desire in me. I'm stuck in a shell, but I want to be free. And I got that weird old funny feeling again. Like a bush, but I'm a burning man. Said, uh, burn, burn, burn another one down. Burn, burn, burn another one down. Burn, burn, burn another one down to the ground. Another one. Burn, burn, burn another one down to the. Burn, burn, burn another one down. Burn, burn, burn another one down to the ground. I see a fire burning down the mountain. Come on in, you got to see. There's 
a bush fire raging outside my house. And there's a bush fire raging inside my life. Deep burning anger has come into my heart. I decide not to break things because I've done that before and it doesn't work. Well, there's a bush fire burning inside my heart. To go, but I just make a start. Sit down, well, I sit down. Well, there's a deep, 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 deep desire in me. I'm stuck in a shell, but I want to be free. And I got that weird old funny feeling again. Like a bush, but I'm a burning man. Said, uh, burn, burn, burn another one down. Burn, burn, burn another one down. Burn, burn, burn another one down to the ground. Another one. Burn, burn, burn another one down to the. Burn, burn, burn another one down. Burn, burn, burn another one down to the ground. I see a fire burning down the mountain. Come on in, you got to see.
Australia. Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Live Cook Channel, where you get to cook along with the best chefs in the country in your own kitchen, and all the while supporting the restaurant industry. I'm your host, Pete Goffwood. So we at the Live Cook Channel have been celebrating Women's Month in August, and to that end, we have our very first superwoman cook joining us tonight. She's a fantastic chef in her own right, great entertainer and TV personality. Jenny Morris, welcome on board. You're away, darling, but I have to say, at least I'm with you tonight, and I'm really excited because you know what? You said it's Women's Month, and I cannot wait to announce the winners of the Superwoman competition. So don't go away because you'll never know if it's you. And the Fantastic prizes stuff, are great. amazing. Fantastic stuff, Jane. Great to see you. And we also like to have a special welcome to a couple of our corporate groups uh, to Anton and his team at CSS and I, <clears throat> as well, excuse me, as well as Fabio and his team from Terramanzi. Welcome board guys. I hope you guys all enjoy your cooking tonight. Um, we have a fantastic night ahead of you. I know what Jenny's cooking. It is going to be super delicious. And also cooking along with Jenny is going to be super entertaining as always. But we on the live channel must give some thanks because we have some fantastic uh, support partners who help us put this program together. And one of those is a fantastic organization, Saga, which is the South African Avocados Grows. Ab <laughs> I'll do that again the South African Avocados Growers Association. Now, the association knows we love avos. It's part of our South African DNA, and they have now launched into a, into a, a new campaign to plant in different varieties in different temperate zones around the country so they can bring us avos all year round. Two different varieties of avos are grown in South Africa, has type dark skins and green skins. Has type avos have thick pebbly skins that darken as they ripen. Green skin avos have thinner skins that remain green when ripe. <clears throat> See, not only is this fun, it's great and informative. I have to admit that I always thought that those two were different types of avocados. It turns out they're both has, just different kinds of skins. We're going to talk about you and I, Jenny, about which one you prefer a little bit later. But it's great to be cooking with you tonight. This whole pandemic and lockdown has led to this kind of interaction stuff. This is, in fact, the second time you and I have cooked together online, cooked together virtually. Do you think it's the way of the future? Absolutely. I don't think it's going to go away, Pete. It's just so convenient, so inexpensive, and just so delicious. You can drink as much wine as you like, um, and you can just flop into bed. It's here to stay, darling. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and, and thank, thankfully, we all have wine this week, so that's... That's all good. That's all good. Right. So, folks, for those of you who just tuned in, this is how this is how live cook works. You can book to cook, buy a ticket to participate in this fantastic episode. You can do so. Uh, you can do so on foodguru.menu or through web tickets. Once you've bought a ticket, um, you will get a fantastic food parcel of locally sourced organic produce delivered to your doorstep by a daily dish. And then you get to cook along with our chosen chef and sample their fantastic delight. You can watch on um, uh, as just a normal viewer, but you do not get to sample the beautiful delights. <clears throat> and, of course, the other bonus of buying a ticket is you get to win some fantastic prizes. We have a number of giveaways of lucky tickets during the program, which we'll, we'll talk about later. And we also have our fantastic Instagram picture. You're going to post a picture of your photograph. But we want to keep this as interactive as possible. So please send us your comments or your questions or, or whatever it is you want to talk about. But you need to reference it with a hashtag live cook channel if you're doing it through Twitter. Or you can do it online. You'll see the little um, comment here on YouTube. You can just send us a drop us a line. Tell us we're going too fast. Tell us you've missed a step. Tell us your kitchen as set a light that we need to call the fire brigade. Whatever you need to do, we want you to communicate with us. We want to make this as live as humanly possible. Okay, so don't forget that hashtag. We want to hear from you throughout the show. So, Jenny, what are we talking about? Well, tonight it's all about breasts, darling, and beautiful plump rosy tomatoes and some lovely fresh cream and mushrooms and feta and mozzarella. We're going to do some stuffed bacon-wrapped chicken breasts. And it's one of my favorite dishes because I, I like that kind of food during winter. 
And you can serve it on potatoes, you can serve it on rice, you can serve it on pasta, you can serve it any way you like. Take it and own it. Fantastic. Um, we're telling people now to make sure your, your oven is on at 180 degrees so that you can keep 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 abreast of the recipe. Um, um, any, any other specialized cooking equipment you might need? Pete, you know, it's going to be the, as long as you don't burn your bacon, you're not going to need a lot of frying pans. So you're going to need some frying pans, one for the sauce. If you don't burn the bacon, use that to blister your tomatoes because you'll get all that lovely deliciousness on the bottom of the pan. You need a pot, obviously, to um, boil your <coughs> potatoes. And you're going mm -hmm. to need um, a, in fact, maybe a pair of tongs or if you're going to have a pair of gloves, to, if you want to touch the raw chicken, no glove, no love. I've got gloves. Um, and then you're going to need just a lovely plate to plate up and maybe a spatula, but just like the normal stuff that you have in your kitchen. Obviously, in your cupboard, you'll have your oils and in the fridge, you'll have some butter, salt and pepper. You've got everything. You're very well equipped. and You've got your lovely box of ingredients. Fantastic. And of course, we're we're assuming that you have the, the pantry essentials, folks at home, salt, pepper, butter, a bit of olive oil, maybe the odd lemon to squeeze if you need to. Um, so, Jenny, why don't you take us through what's actually in the basket in terms of ingredients? All right. Listen, I'm going to start off with we've got these beautiful new potatoes. Just have a look at that. Beautiful baby new potatoes. Um, I've chosen to serve this with our dish. We're going to crush the life out of them and then we're going to crisp them up beautifully. And I just want you to remember, this is going to be the first thing that we're going to cook. So we're going to get some water into this pot, cold water, and in they'll go. So they are going to be, it's like a passive income, you know, it's happening while you're not realizing it. Um, and you're going to boil those first. So we've got these beautiful new potatoes. Just look at them. Oh, love it. Then um, for the filling, we have got um, spinach, beautiful spinach delivered. We've got some parsley. We've got garlic, very, very good for you. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Mozzarella, all the hard work has been taken out of it, so it's grated and ready to use. Onion, I've already chopped mine because I've got a sous chef, so um, I've got my Geordie to chop the onion for me. Mushrooms, just look at these beautiful button mushrooms. They are crisp and they are tight. They're fabulous. Fresh rosemary, and we've got some feta cheese. So that's for our filling. Then... Um, for the sauce, we got our fresh cream, and I'm assuming you have got everything in your box. Oops, once again, some lovely fresh garlic, and these gorgeous, they're wonderful, um, cherry tomatoes, and then we've got breasts. We've got chicken breasts. Look at those. These are nice D cups. We've got some chicken breasts, <laughs> and then we have some bacon. <laughs> oh, just wait, darling. This is going to be the best boob job ever, because when they get into the heat, they're gonna just plump up even more. And we've got some beautiful streaky bacon, okay? Um, and what else do we need? I think that's about it, if I'm not mistaken, except my surprise, except. little gift to all of you. Yes, indeed, the mystery ingredient. And it is called, mm -hmm, this is called a hath, not a bass. It's not a, it's a hath. Has like in bass, not a horse, like in a rabbit yes. or a quatra. No, it's okay? it's it's a little... no, this is has. And these are named after a postman, a very clever postman, but I'll share that oh. story later. And then I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna do something with it. I normally like them naked, but I found stuff in the fridge, so we'll make something nice with these later. Okay, so that's us. Oh, and I've got a secret ingredient as well. I've got some savory rice, Robertson savory rice mix. I've been mean, kind of licking it. It's very nice on popcorn <laughs> of all things, but I'm going to actually use this. You can buy smaller packs. You can buy smaller packs in the supermarket, uh, but I'm going to use this for my crushed potatoes instead of salt. So it'd be really, really nice. It's just because just wow. it says rice doesn't mean I can't use it on potato. So we're going to use that later. So that's us, that Pete. Okay, and also yes. just so let us know, last episode... Oh. So we there was a promised bottle of the juice in your basket, and unfortunately, due to process action, we weren't able to get that to you. So that is in the basket tonight. It is a fantastic uh, ingredient. Jen and I were were insta. We were involved right in the launch of this. We've done countless demonstrations. It is yes. a beautiful product, and it has a variety of uses. You can use it as a drink. It's fantastic in cocktails. Mm -hmm. It makes a fa fabulous 
with some tonic and some fresh mint makes a fantastic, and a little bit of um, a rooibos tea makes a fantastic uh, non-alcoholic cocktail, but it's fantastic for cooking. Um, it really is brilliant as a, as a, actually, it, funnily enough, it actually predates vinegar. It's made from, verjuice means green juice, it's actually made from unripe grapes. And the Romans used to use it before they came across vinegar, so they use it as acid in cooking. So there you go. Fantastic product, and we finally got it to you in your basket. And so, you can deglaze um, your pan with it. Fabish Daily Dish there. Thank you to the guys who provide these fantastic baskets and these great ingredients. Well, Jen, um, it's time to do some cooking. I think it's all down to you. Take it away. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to my kitchen. You're going to hear obscene parrots talking and voicing their opinions, dogs barking. I have a very loud, she is so loud, my pussycat. Her name is Missy, and she is just that. I want you to please get started, guys, by popping your potatoes into cold water, okay? It grows under the ground, so it needs cold water. Let's get those potatoes um, into the pot so they can start cooking. I'm going to just whack some salt into it. And then, uh, Jordi, I've got salt and pepper over there. I'm going to ask my Jordi, who is my sous chef. He's going to bring me some salt. And in they go, okay? They're more or less all the same size. Um, try and do that when you are cooking. Try and keep them all the same size. The little ones will cook slightly quicker than the, the big ones. Again, you just add some salt. You can use any salt you like, kosher salt, flake salt, anything you want. And once that is cooking, I'm going to just pop the lid on and let it just do its thing. Okay, so Pete, you're gonna us posted once everybody's got all their potatoes in the pot we'll go on to the stuffing because i need that stuffing to be nice and cold before we stuff those breasts and i'll tell you why i don't want the cheese melting i want it to melt in the oven okay so how far have we okay. got with our potatoes and if we've got well i'm assuming that the thing is that the, this is probably the easiest part of it, that most people have got their potatoes in by now. I just uh, a couple of things. I see. Yeah. I see. We have a couple of regulars. Uh, Fabio Venturi is back. Man cannot get enough of the cooking. Good to see you back um, uh, joining us again, Fabio. I hope. Uh, I hope your dish turns out well again this evening. I think, uh, Jen. Let's launch straight into it, huh? Okay, where is the bacon? Okay, so Any idea uh, where the, the next bacon thing... is? The bacon. The bacon yes. is for wrapping your breasts in. Yeah. So why it's it's tricky. We're not actually sure where it comes Freaky. from. Oh. Uh, man. Yeah. Pig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's from a pig's belly. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> okay. So your mushrooms, just remember you when you stuff the breasts, um, you don't want them to be too overstuffed. I'm so greedy. I promise you, I'll try and put everything and too much in. But what happens is you can't close the bacon around it. So chop you your mushrooms. If they've got any little black black bits, yes, just chop them right down. Almost like a duck cell. Tell them what that is, Pete. Okay, so the, uh, our viewers will know what a duck cell is because um, in our second episode, uh, Luke Dale Roberts did a beef wellington. Um, and they've already had to make a duck ah. cell, so we should have most of our regulars knowing exactly what to do right about now. There you go. So, but I like my rough and ombaskov. I like it to be nice and rough because you know what happens once you get that filling in your mouth. I, I don't want everything to be the same. I'm such a texture mama. I love texture. Mm. So I don't mind a little pop of a bigger piece, you know. So um, these are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mushrooms. Do, yeah. So say it again, yeah, you don't mind the pop of the bigger piece in your mouth. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I get a, a big piece of mushroom, a little piece of mushroom, but I don't want like a right. whole mushroom. Okay. okay just, uh, yeah. These mushrooms are beautiful. As you, yeah. 
grown in very sterile conditions. So don't wash them if you see a little black spot on them. Just dust it off, darling, because they are like sponges. And they're going to just suck up the water and get all slimy and manky, and you don't want that, okay? You see how little bit goes such a long way? We have a quick question from the end. You want to have a very good glass of wine. You can have a glass of wine. No, she wants to know where's your glass of wine. Where's my glass? Yeah. I'll be dancing on the gas ring. Don't be ridiculous. Um, I'll have one later. I have a cup of tea here, though. I'm so boring. I don't need it. <laughs> here we go. Okay. Yeah, no, I've okay. seen Jenny after a couple of glasses of wine. She literally will be dancing on the stoves. <laughs> Do you remember when we were in Johannesburg with all the chefs and we went to that Greek restaurant? Mm. Okay, Indeed. take your garlic and crush it. Crush it. Now, um, I promise you, this is my favorite fragrance. It's called Izimi Garlic. And I don't care if my partner don't like it because if he don't like it, he goes without. You know what I'm talking about. So I just press it down, but I am nice to him. If you, are, you love the flavor, but you don't really like the smell, the minute you crush the garlic, what happens is there's an, a chemical um, reaction that happens and the compounds come together and that's where the smell comes from. That's why they call it the stinking rose. So if you have someone that doesn't like the intensity of garlic, rather just do this right at the end, just before it goes into the pan, okay? And now I'm going to just chop this garlic down. And if you want to make it a little bit finer, because I really like intense garlic, you can just take a little bit of salt if you want to, and it'll just help you. It'll cause a little bit of friction, and it'll just help you to, to chop it out a bit, okay? So now so I am good. almost ready. So we have a quick there question. We go. I have garlic. Oh, yeah. oh, chopping the mushrooms, not slicing. So there was just a question about chopping or slicing uh, the mushrooms. You can slice them and then chop them. You can hurt them. I don't care what you do with them, but they must be small. So you can even like go through them once again like this, okay? So, um, because remember, no one's going to see this. That's why I love food that's wrapped because you can even, you can have the biggest flop on earth as long as it's a delicious flop and you can hide it in your breasts. You can hide them in a wrap. You can hide them in a pancake. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You just go ahead, my love, and you chop it. You can chop it any which way you like. Put it in a machine if you want to. Okay. Tell us a little bit more about the knife oh, you're using. Nice. You know, you've got a, got a, tech, a little cleaver there. I've got all kinds of knives. Oh, my goodness. This is my cleaver. I'm the diva with a cleaver. Um, seriously, um, I, have a, a, <laughs> I have a cleaver named after me. Um, I love my cleaver. And I've traveled the world with my cleaver. I have all different shapes and sizes. I've got big ones like this, like the Chinese use, and I do everything with it. I've got a small one like this. I've got another size and another size. And where's my beautiful cleavers? I've got gorgeous. You must look in this cupboard. Every kind of knife doll. They got us. In fact, <laughs> I, still have, I still have the beautiful cleaver you gave me on one of your first trips to the East. And I still use that cleaver that you bought. Do you see? Yeah. And they never, ever, Pete, this is the best thing in my life. Uh, but I now have a very fancy one as well with my name on it. <laughs> um, but oh, I still lovely. like to use these because so many memories, memories. Okay. So now for the filling, I'm going to, you know, we set these wooden boards alight. Thank God I don't have a, a smoke alarm um, in this house because I'm it would be hysterical. Okay. So, um, have you got your ovens on 180 for just in case? I don't know what's going on. Oh, here we go. She's here. So, I'm just going to have this pan, and I'm going to just give it a nice squish um, of olive oil. Let me just give it a – I don't want to make it too, too oily, okay? Because remember, we've got all that cheese as well. So, some olive oil, and I'm going to put a little couple of blobs of butter. Not too much, not too little. They call me Betty Butterlegs. Everything tonight you're eating is with butter, but you're going to love it. Am I going too fast? No, no, no. I think the How place is... How are we doing? Am I, I going? Am I good? good? Some very handy cooks watching this program. Um, Jen, so I, I, we're, we're, oh. we're good for now. Oh, excellent. Okay. So the reason why I've added um, some olive oil to the mix as well is because 
I don't want my butter to burn. I'm using salted butter. I love it because it's like when you make burnt sage butter. I love all those little solids that drift to the bottom of the pan and it gives me some lovely pan juices. So I'm going to just let the butter melt and the minute the butter melts, um, we're going to pop in our onions first. Okay, I've chopped my onions nice and fine. Once again, everything is small because you want to pop it into the breast and you don't want the breasts to be bulging because then the bacon is not big enough to enclose the door. Okay. Yeah. And just to we'll answer a, a question. A secret. Yes. Just to answer a question uh, to Walt, size is not everything. Um, just a question. That's what uh, you the think. Potatoes... <laughs> no, he said they only received the potatoes. Bread, not... uh, the question was should oh, the potatoes gee, be double boiled? D's. Yeah. They should be starting to so boil. Yes. Can you see the smoke coming off my pot? You want them to be fork tender so that we can squish them when it's time to cook. Okay, look at my butter. Oh my goodness, just look how, oh, look at that butter. It's, and it just smells so delicious. And in I'm going with the onions. Don't put the garlic in yet, because if you put the garlic in now, it's the sulfur, it's going to burn and it's going to be manky. It'll spoil your whole dish. So, Geordie, I'm going to start collecting lots and lots of dishes for you, my love. I'm going to just get in here and then just the minute this becomes slightly translucent, let's go in with the garlic. This is going to be all about aroma, okay? In with the garlic um, and with our mushrooms. Our mushrooms got a very high water content and what I love is it's going to cook down, it's going to release all of that beautiful umami flavor um, into your pan. And we'll only season it just now, okay? Because I don't want to release the water too soon and the salt will do that. I want to get a nice bit of golden color um, onto that. So as you can see, it's not swimming in butter, neither is it swimming in oil, but it's coating it beautifully. And now I'm going to get my rosemary, beautiful fresh rosemary that was delivered. Okay. And of course, we're going to multitask because while this is doing its thing, we're going to put the other things into our mixing bowl um, for the uh, stuffing. And then we'll go on to the breasts, okay? So rosemary, beautiful rosemary. Um, I can see that this has been washed. I can still feel a little bit of damp on mine. Rosemary is quite an intense herb. And uh, you've got to be careful not to use too much. It's called the friendship herb, actually. Peter, this is for you, my love. All the years, all the years that we've known each other. Um, rosemary is very, very good. You can rinse your hair with it. Apparently, it's very, very good for you rinsing your hair. It's good yeah. for baldness, I'm told. Yes. And I'm told what's even better is if you let a, no, a cow, if you let a cow lick your head at this point in time, it could get your hair growing again. Because they've really? got a rough tongue and, and it opens up all the, yes. Get a cow. Really? You let a cow. Okay. Yes. Mm. I'm looking for this rosemary to almost be like rosemary dust. Okay. I'm going to just chop it. You don't have to see me chopping. Okay. Look at that. I want it to be, because it's quite a tough herb, you want to almost make this quite uniform in, in size. If you look in your pan, you'll see that slowly, slowly the mushroom is starting to allow its um, delicious stock to escape into the pan. In with my rosemary. And the trick here is, it's not a trick, it's the best thing in life, is to make sure that put your face over that pan and when those beautiful aromas start to come and touch your nostrils, it's time to switch it off, okay? There's a time and a place for everything. And for me, it's all cooking is all about time. I always find that we're a little bit impatient um, and we want to put everything in the pan, they want to take it out, but we've got to give it time. Give it time to release its beautiful volatile oils. Give it time to release its beautiful juices in the pan. Um, and it's absolutely worth every minute that you spend allowing that to happen. I think it's interesting, actually, Jen, oh. because it, more people, it, it's one of those funny things that food is a lot like that. When you can smell it, it usually means it's ready. I mean, it's the same thing if you cook, if you cook sweet corn, if you cook corn on the cob, you can tell yes. 
Yes. When you smell the corn, when you get that bit, that lovely rich yes. smell of corn, then you know oh. it's ready and you can turn it off. You yes. don't have to check the pot. When you can smell it, you know it's ready. Exactly. Absolutely, Peter. I couldn't agree with you more. I laugh. David always says, oh, that pot's boiling and boiling and boiling. David is my other half, my better half, my partner, my lover, my friend, my tormentor, um, my nagger. Um, he's the person <laughs> that just supports me all the way um, to the bank. He supports everything I do. But what he does is um, he always complains and he turns my flipping pots down all the time. He, the one thing that man doesn't understand is that sometimes you need a rolling boil. Am yes. I right? Um, and he'll say, gosh, that corn has been in there for so long because I cook corn for not only myself, but I cook it also for my parrots. And um, like you say, you can smell it. Now, talking about smelling, I have got already my potatoes are starting to, to boil beautifully. Um, I have got my mushrooms and I've got my um, rosemary and my garlic and my onions in the pan. They're starting to give off. That little bit of liquid, we don't want to throw that liquid away because that's all flavor. Have a look at that. I'm going to turn the heat up ever so slightly, just because I would like to just reduce some of that um, because I want it to stick um, onto its little onion body. Have a look there. And then I'm going to pop it um, into a bowl to cool down and then we'll go on to the next step. How are we doing, everybody? Are we catching up, keeping up? Am I talking too much? Am I going too fast? What do you need? We good, Pete? So far, I think we're fabulous. We usually mm. we usually get a couple of calls or the messages if, if people are getting a bit lost, and everyone seems to be okay. um, loving the garlic and the onions and the process so far. So I'm, I'm taking I'm making the assumption that everyone is up to speed. Fantastic. Now I'm going to add a bit of pepper. Can I give you a little secret? You know what I do? I am absolutely crazy about ground white pepper, and I love black pepper. So I actually toast my black peppercorns. And what I do is I mix the two together and I get a flavor that is just too incredible for words. Um, a little bit of salt is going to go into here now. And then I'm going to just give you a quick little recap, Pete, just in case that um, somebody is lagging behind. In this pan, I have mushrooms. I have beautiful rosemary. I've got the garlic. The perfume's hitting me in the face. And I've got my onions. And obviously, I've cooked it with some butter and olive oil and then in the pot as you can see it's merrily doing its little thing here i have my potatoes remember if it grows under the ground cold water if it grows above the ground you can put cold water don't put bicarb in no. water Ooh. trying to make the food gee gosh no. i want to kill myself no. that's oh. how you let every had... goodness of your vegetables absolutely whatever i can't i can't um, in fact, I had a meal at a Chinese restaurant before lockdown, and it's not my favorite one, not my special one. And I got this taste on the meat. And I got this taste on the meat, and I thought, what is it? Because you know that the, the food is cut very, very thinly, and it was bicarb. They used yeah. it to tenderize the meat, but they hadn't washed it off, you know, because it does, it breaks mm. everything down. So, okay. I'm happy. Ready. It's disgusting. Okay, so you've had my recap. This is my third recap. If anybody is lagging behind, everything is in the pan. We need to cool this down now, okay? So I'm going to take my mushrooms with the garlic and the rosemary and the onions and put them into a nice cold bowl. Look at that. Oh, Peter, I could just eat this as is right now. Mm. That looks lovely. Delicious. It really is good. And you know what? This pan is going to be the pan because I haven't burnt anything. Um, and, you know, <laughs> chefs, we call it caramelization, don't we, darling? <laughs> so this is going to cool down now <laughs> um, in a bowl. Just put it at an open window if you want to. Because normally, I mean, we wouldn't, you wouldn't be cooking with time constraints. You would be doing this at home and getting it ready. And what's nice about this dish is that it freezes so, so well. Jordi, can I ask you, my love, to pop that on the patio just to cool it down? Thanks, sweetheart. Jordi is very camera shy. Come and stand here, Jordi. Come and say hello to all of these lovely people. Tell them what a wonderful boss I am. Oh, she's a lovely boss. He, did you hear? He said, she's a lovely boss. And I love you, Jordi. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> I do. I love him. He's one of my best boys. Okay. I'm going to just take um, 
This is the best thing in my life, Pete. If you haven't got one, I will give you one. It's a tomato oh, wow. lighter, and it cuts aubergine oh, wow. thin like paper. Oh, serious. It oh, is really? fantastic. Really, really. Okay, this is still oh, too wow. hard. Um, I want them to be fork tender, and then we'll drain them, and then we're going to just give them a little gentle little squish, okay? And just a nice little squish. But if you've finished with your filling, or most of it, cooling it down, the next step is going to be, if you haven't done your spinach, I've done it already, but here's a quick little tip. You can just pop it into the pot. If you put it on, on a sieve or a colander, slice it very, very thin. Look at that. You can see this is like shreds. I've shredded it, and then you can just stick it into like a, a sieve, your sieve that you would use maybe for, this is just a baby one, but you can save water, save water. Um, and you can just pop it and blanch it um, in with your potatoes. Uh, that's just one pot less to wash. And don't think I take advantage of Geordie because I've got two dishwashers. Hey, Geordie, tell the truth. Um, and then just make sure that you've squished out every little drop of water, okay? Because you don't want it to be manky, but you want it to be beautifully textured. So I'm going to wait for you to start chopping up your um, spinach. Make sure it's beautifully washed. And this is actually Swiss chard. Um, it's the more textured leaves. Spinach is more gentle. Um, this is rough and tough, just like me. I like, I like texture, so I prefer the Swiss chard. We call it spinach, but um, just make sure that there are no little grains of sand in it, because that can spoil your whole dish. Okay, so would you like uh, to tell me if everyone is caught up? Has, have people actually already blanched their spinach, Pete? I'd like to know. Um, I don't think they have, but I think they're, I think they're taking up the, 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 the... I like the Higgins. What if you don't have a patio? Janet, well, I'm um, sorry for you, but... Um, the window. <laughs> yeah. Open the window. I think so. <laughs> Pull it out the window. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Put it on the roof of your uh, or, caravan. Or you know what I normally do? Yes. Or what you do is take a big dinner plate and just spread it out. Spread it out so that yes. it'll be cold before you know. Just stick it in front of an open window. And if you don't have yep. dogs, stick it on the cold tile floor. Um, it'll, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You can put it in the, uh, the aroma is the aromas are amazing. Do you like that? I promise you, this is just the beginning, baby. This is just the foundation of this dish. <laughs> oh. Peter, I need my, I need your glasses and mine. What is that? I also have a Swiss roll. Swiss oh, chard. Swiss chard. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Oh, yes. Swiss chard is beautiful. I have a garden. I've, I've planted well, I on my patio because I'm food. lucky you enough should, to have you one. Should. Yeah. All, kit, all, all <laughs> kitchens should have a jewelry. I, I wish I had one when I cook. Yes. I, I used to, when, oh. I, when I grew up as a student, um, we used to have this rule in the house where if you cooked, you didn't have to wash up. And so I lived with guys oh, who hated cooking and I and I hated cleaning. So it worked well. When I got married, I tried that. And apparently the new rule is if ah. you make the mess, you clean it up yourself. So Oh, Elise, yes. I love you, baby. <laughs> um I what I tested my filling and I cut my rosemary cut too my rosemary thick. Too what thick. do I do? I don't think that's much of a problem. Do you know what you do, sweetheart? Just pick pick it out. Pick 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 it out. Pick it out, put it on your board because it'll be soft enough and then just hit it. Give it a clap. If it's very, very big, just take some of it out. It'll be fine. Don't don't stress. Yeah. Because by the time you start mixing it with all, with all the other things, it's going to poke out anyway. So just, just pick yeah. it out if, if it's too big. And it should be okay even if it's quite big because by the time he's fried it off, it'll soften. It'll collapse. And it'll be soften a little bit yeah. in the breast anyway. So it'll yeah. be cooked by the time it's done. Yes. So he'll be fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so I've got everything cooling. Are we all at that point where um, everything is cooling? Sorry, Sharon. I have um, a lot more spinach than like you. Lot, blanched is actually, you'll see how it reduces quite drastically. Um, Jenny started with the same and amount of spinach. It. As you did. By the time she's yes. chopped it, blanched it, and let it cool down and squeezed it, it'll be, you'll have the same amount. Yeah. It's 99%. Trust me, it's the most... Water, yes, and lots and lots of that water. And don't throw that water away. Use it on your plants. Cool it down. Pop it onto your plants because all the nutrients are in there. We can drink it yourself. Okay. Um, I 
want to check these patatis again. Oh, they're getting there nicely. I'd like to move on to the, the next step, which is going to be taking the chicken breasts and butterflying them out. Are we all on board? Are we ready for that? I think so. Are you ready for a little bit of butterfly? Yeah? Okay. So, I'm going to use the same board because I'm not going to put anything fresh on it. I'm going to waste not, want not, and mess not. Okay. So, I have these four beautiful, beautiful breasts. Um, they're, they're nicely cleaned, I must say. And so, let's start with one so we can see how we go. Think of this breast. Uh, don't worry about these little bits of fat. Um, that you will see just on the end here, because I promise you when the heat gets to it, they're going to shrivel up and it's going to disappear. But if it freaks you out, just give it a little trim around the side, like so. And then I want you to get your hand, just push the breast out like that, and just give it a nice little stroke, okay? Just stroke it and make sure it's beautifully leveled out. Now, the thing with this is you want to try and open it out so that it's quite even because you can't eat raw chicken. You know you're going to die. So you want to make sure that you evenly slice it open. So put your hand on the breast and then sort of halfway, halfway, right in the middle over here, you're going to start and gently, and just to go slowly, okay? You want to just pull your knife through, just slide it through like so, Okay. And then keep going. And we don't want, we want to, there we go. We want to keep this part. We need that ridge because it's going to hold everything into place. But if you run your hand over the breast like that, you're going to find there are a couple of lumps and bumps and humps. So where the bumps are, just take your sharp knife and just open it out a little bit more. If you cut through and there's a couple of holes and gaps, don't get hysterical because the beauty of chicken breast is the minute the heat gets it, it just closes up, okay? So just do that and make sure that they're all opened up. I'm going to do the next one. Just take away those little bits on the side. Um, as I say, you don't need to trim it because it's just going to cook away. It's a tiny little bit of fat. Okay. And I start at the thick side and just pull it through. I'm going to take this knife now. In fact, I'm going to take my burning knife, okay, which I have in the drawer. All right. You're going to just go like that, open it out, and just keep doing that, okay? Pop it down. It's quite humpy and lumpy over there. Just open it out a little bit. I'm trying to hide that hole from you because I'm a chef. <laughs> it's going to cook. It's only a little hole. Small hole. Small hole. Small hole. Um, there we go. Just look at that. Okay. That's a beauty. And the next one. Now, I'm cooking dinner for Geordie tonight. Lucky man. So I better do this properly. Yes, he's a lucky boy. Um, we've already given my other son um, some leftover vegetables from last night. No meat, because he, he doesn't eat bacon. So he'll eat the breast, but we just gave him millions of veggies. He's quite happy with that. Okay, so have a look. One, two, three. Don't forget, run your hands over it. If there's anything that's thick, uh, too thick, causing a little humpy and a lumpy, just just, Sorry, again, just flatten it out can a we bit, okay? Yes, ma'am. Can you slow down a second? Just, yeah. um, uh, just can you just recap again sure. the, the spinach? I think I think people are struggling a little bit with the blanching of the spinach. Um, oh, so, okay. So, uh, so what we, I did we, was we, you, you from we're going to shred it go. nice and thin. Yeah. And you don't, you don't have to do it this way. Um, I normally, just to save water, to save time, I put it into a sieve. Uh, if I've got something on the stove, and just stick it and let it just steam nicely because it also doesn't suck up as much water. Um, and once it's cooked, 
you just refresh it under the tap of cold water and then you squeeze it. You, you literally, it's got to, you squeeze it till it's almost like fitting um, into your hand, okay? And this one even still has water. Let me show you. As much as I've squeezed it, I've kept a bit of water in just to show you. Have a look there. Can you see? You want to squeeze every last drop of water out. So that big packet becomes that. Look at that. See? Yeah. So steam it. The smaller you, the thinner you cut it, the quicker it'll steam. That's what I'm left with. I just want to get some of this chicken off me. Ah. Okay. And then I'm going to even cut it down further. Could you have just also um, um, the pan you used for your for your mushroom friendly? You could have just you could also just fry it off in that pan as well, couldn't you? Yes. If you if you were going to steam it, you could just Absolutely. fry it off in the pan. Yeah. Pick up all those yes, juice and stuff that all you want to do is you want yeah. exactly you want to collapse it and just get rid of the, yeah. the moisture in it. That's all we need. Okay. Fantastic. I'm going to even cut this a little bit further, Pete. So it's amazing. Look at that. That's why spinach is so incredible in a smoothie. Um, you can bring it's me the smoothie. mushrooms. How are mushrooms looking, Geordie? Mm, because you've got all that lovely hydration <laughs> happening from the stems, and it's really amazing. Renia, a question from right. here. How do we know? We, sorry, we have a question from Renia. It says, How do we ready? When it, when it wilts completely down and, and it's quite soft, you imagine um, yes. it, it's quite a robust leaf. When it's cooked, it'll, it'll collapse on itself completely and be quite soft. Absolutely. So, have you all done finished doing your chicken breasts? Breasts ready? This yeah, I think good. a sharp knife is okay. hugely important. It's always, whenever you're cooking, Very a sharp knife is important. Definitely, especially when you're doing something like this, but just anything. Chopping onions, chopping garlic, yeah. mushrooms. You do less damage with a sharp knife than you do with a blunt knife. A blunt knife is the most dangerous thing on earth, I have to tell you. <laughs> that's, right. that's when accidents happen. Yeah, yeah. I was going to wash these hands. I've got this thing about chicken on me. Um I'm more hysterical about chicken than COVID. <laughs> okay, so now my chicken so is all you, ready. You added your, your spinach, your chopped spinach. Now it's cooked and blanched and squeezed. You've added it to the mushroom yep. mixture. Is that correct? Cool. Yes, the cooled mushroom mix. I'm now going to add my mozzarella. Yeah. Or your feta for that. And don't... And feta as well. Oh, yes. And parsley and garlic. Now, if you don't want to add more garlic, because there's quite a bit of, of garlic in the mushroom, don't stress. You don't have to add extra. Okay. Um, I'm going to just drain this. It's lovely, soft, uh, lovely, lovely, soft fit. I'm going to just drain it. Okay. So how far are you? Parsley needs chopping. Parsley. I love, I know all parsley is the same, but I've got this thing about flat leaf parsley. Um, my mother used to make parsley omelets when we were children. We'd go running into the garden and pick it. And I, I just love, I love the stems. Please don't pick the leaves and throw the stems away because I've got your DNA. I will just make you walk funny for the rest of your life. All the flavor, all the deliciousness um, is in the parsley stem. And what I love about it, parsley's got more vitamin C than an orange. So come on, people. Oh. You know what? You need immune-boosting foods. Parsley. I think it's a much misunderstood so to, herb. Oh, I think it's just a garnish. It really has got a yes. lovely flavor to it. Not it adds a garnish. Great. Oh. And it's the same with all soft herbs. Absolutely. Um, uh, 
You know, yes. there's more flavor in the stems yes. and the herbs, like coriander, um, sage, Absolutely. all of those soft oh. herbs. I always leave the stems in. Yes. Absolutely. I know some people look at me funny, especially my students <laughs> when they come to me. <laughs> and I make a shot at them. <laughs> okay. So uh, just give your parsley a nice chop. I think we need to um, just get it um, into the stuffing. We need to help Sabine. She seems to be trapped on me. the balcony. If anyone, maybe Sabine's neighbors can go and get her. She seems <laughs> to be trapped on the balcony. Her mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Renny, both, uh, both cheeses, man. Add both cheeses. Yes. Um, if you're uh, going to keep some to of this it up, it doesn't really matter. You can leave the stalk in. Just a question about the spinach. Oh, yeah, you can leave the stalk in. It's lovely. It's texture. Yeah. Now, you might find that uh, you, if you, depending on the size of the breasts, you might find you have a little bit of filling left. Don't throw it away. Just put some breadcrumbs with it and make some little feta and spinach cakes. Delicious. You can have it as a side dish. Well, you could keep it okay. for an omelet for the following go. morning. Oh, yes, absolutely. What a delicious omelet it will be as well. Okay, Geordie, we're looking good here, my friend. I'm just going to the bin. Oops, we need a new bag. <clears throat> Right. Hands are clean. Yeah, Let me start getting okay. out some spoons. Out. Yes. Yeah. Say again, Pete. No, I'm just joking. I was just saying to people, while you take the rubbish out, I'll just chat to them. Yes, you have a good old chat to them. I need to change the bug. Swap the bag. Really, okay. yes, oh, my potatoes are wonderful. Yes. These are amazing. We're going to strain them. Geordie's going to strain them for me. Mine are absolutely beautiful. The thing about uh, when you're cooking um, carbohydrates or starches, um, I, I hate it when people skip the step, unless you've got health problems, okay? You must always put the salt in because it's a different flavor, Peter. Am I right? It tastes completely. Right. I hate this. I, I love, you know, because it's that then you put putting raw salt. Uh, it just there's a chemistry yeah. that happens um, when you cook it in with the veg. And I don't get me wrong. I love a bit of molten salt scattered because for me it's my rock candy. But then you have bland. Okay, so don't forget that. Here we go. Look at this. It's coming together so nicely. I'm going to put my hands in. Let me just get this ring off. Yeah, I, we see a just comment. Just get your there. hands dirty. Scissors rather than knife. Yeah, very good idea. Excellent idea. Especially yes. for things like chives. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Well, you can do them with a knife, but it needs to be sharp. You know what people do? I hate yeah. it when I see the green juice on the board, not in the bowl. Um, they they press yeah. this a little tube, you know, it needs lots of loving care. Um, like an avocado, you know, they say, hey, Pete, you wouldn't squeeze a baby because you would bruise it. So don't squeeze the avocado. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard something else about avocados. Yeah. Sorry for another day. Yes. Okay, so we have quite a lot of filling here. I'm just looking at my breasts and thinking, mm-hmm. Okay, okay, so, Jen, just, if you can... Just before you put your filling in, just recap exactly what's in that bowl. Okay, so we have beautiful parsley. Um, we've got some feta cheese. This is quite a Danishy type feta, um, so it's a little bit wet. So you, your filling might feel um, a little bit soft, but it's not the end of the world. We've got mozzarella. We have got, um, what have I got in there? I, haven't, I didn't put garlic in it. I've got my mushrooms, I've got my onions, and I've got my spinach. Okay, and, and spinach I'm going to have a lot of this cheeses, for an omelet. Mm, yes. Both cheeses and your, okay, cool. I think we're up to be on the past. That's Perfect. it. And, uh, 
Yes, and the only thing I'm going to do is um, I'm actually not even going to put any more seasoning in because the fish is nice and salty. I put lots of pepper, as you saw, um, when I was mushrooms. doing the mushrooms. So we don't need to yeah. add pepper, but if you want, you can give it another grind of, of black pepper. The choice is yours, but just go easy on the salt because you've got bacon coming as well. Okay, so you're going to make a little sausage um, with your filling, like so. And you're going to put it on the one side of the breast because we're going to fold the other side down, okay? To close it up and to cover it. So here we go. I'm sorry, I, I'm a, I work with my hands. I just wash them all the time. Um, there we go. Just roll it into a nice little sausage. If you wanted to, if it's a little bit wet, you can always put these in the fridge to firm up a bit. But this is going to just ooze all over. It's going to be absolutely gloriously delicious and divine okay so and then just press it down just leave a little bit of a flap on either side um, on the, the side of the breast so that it's got something to to close around okay so this is going to become a i'm going to make a nice little spinach cake with that heat but david likes your yeah. idea of the of the omelette Oh, I think it'll be a lovely omelet, or even a frittata. Mm, a frittata would be oh, nice yes, as well. Oh yes, baby, very, very delicious. Okay, so I now have that. If we are all on track and we've already stuffed our breasts, I'm going to bring you to the bacon. Okay. What I've done is I've just taken some um, cling wrap. It just makes it easier for, for cleaning. And I've covered a board, and I have put my bacon out. I've put it in um, rashes of three. If, depending on the size of the breast, if they're a little bit smaller, you can use two. Um, and once you have closed your chicken up like so, okay, we're going to just pop them onto the board, we'll spread the, we'll, we are going to spread the bacon out. I'll show you what we're going to do. But the one thing we're not going to do is we're not going to pull the bacon and we're not going to try and stretch it. It's the same as pastry. When you are baking pastry, don't stretch it because what happens when it cooks, it just flies all over the show. Am I right here, Pete? You are indeed, Jim. Yep. Okay. Look at that. Gosh, these okay, are so Jenny, dump up beautifully. Slow that process down a section because most of our viewers won't have had a Geordie to lay out their bacon for them already. Um, and so oh, I think fine. the street. I'll, I'll uh, make tea. And I think tea is definitely the way to go. If you were ever to, obviously people are cooking this, but I think if you were if you're good to do this again yourself, streaky is definitely the better bacon to cook with. It's got a much nicer fat yes. content, it crisps up better. Oh you know, yes. And breast doesn't have much fat in it, you know, so it just keeps it nice and moist and succulent while it's cooking, which for me is well, divine. You get all that lovely moisture inside the breast as well, so it's going to be, it's going to be a, a gorgeous, nice, moist dish. You'd have to, you'd really have to forget it in the oven to dry that up. To hurt it, yes, absolutely. Speaking of the oven, I'm just checking that my oven is on thermo and not grill because I have done this. I've done this before oh, yes. where um, mm. I've knocked it. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> and it was a cake. Yeah. There was a cake in the oh, oven. Can you yeah, just imagine? Jeez. Well, we had a, we had a contestant, um, in fact, um, on, on MasterChef Celebrity who did that. It was in the semifinals. And oh. they had this he had this beautiful prawn dish. And he was already a little bit advanced. Oh. And he wanted to keep his prawns warm. So he just put them in the oven and didn't realize that he still had the grill on. And then when the time came to play it up, he brought out this tray of Cajun prawns that were just oh. charred with an inch oh of their life. God. And he cooked it beautifully, beautiful garnish. It was really going to be a, a winner. It would have put him in the front. And he put it in without realizing yes. that the grill was off. He didn't check the oven. He thought it was. He thought he turned it off. Um, and yeah. Oh, no. So. It, it's amazing. Yeah. It's so amazing the silly things we do when we are being competitive when i was judging yeah. chopped south africa uh, one of the chefs i will never forget uh baby chef 
His name was Baby Chef. And okay. uh, he had to do um, a, a, a crayfish dish. And when the plate came down, we said, we said, where's the crayfish? You know, he thought we wouldn't like it because it was ugly. He said, threw it in a bin. <laughs> <laughs> because he thought yeah. it was ugly. He threw it in a bin. Ugly. So, I mean, there was this magnificent, yeah. Absolutely. And then, then his dessert had avocado in it. And he said, no, it okay. didn't taste nice. He didn't want to give it to us. I mean, really? It's, people sure. do silly things. Okay. Yeah. How far we am? I am going a little bit too fast. A little bit. No, I think, no. Now, yeah, look, I think uh, just a thing, a couple of comments. Guys, it doesn't matter if your filling is looking a little bit more rustic than Jenny's. It's inside and provided yes. it tastes fabulous. Don't, don't sweat the, the texture of yes. your filling. As long as it's moist enough that you can roll it into that little sausage, I, I think you'll be fine. And it's going to be hidden. Here we go. So now what yeah. you need to do is take your breast, and take the bacon, because you want that, you want a little bit of a border on the top and the bottom, and we're going to plait it. You just bring it across, and don't stretch it, people. Bring it across like that, okay? Just bring it across, and it's going to hide everything, my darlings. Trust me. And like that, and like that. Look at that. So this is bacon the seal wall, side, because the, this side, yes. That's going in the pan because that's going to keep it all together. If your breasts are a little bit big, um, you can tuck it, tuck it under, and it doesn't matter if a little bit sticks out. You like that, don't you? When a little bit of the breast sticks out, look at that. And you go My like favorite. that, and you go like that. <laughs> there we go, Peter Pan. Um, and so, and so, and so. That's number two. That's number two. And then the next one, just tuck in, tuck in that little straggly bit, and you can just tuck that little bit in and close and close and just close. See? Does that make sense? And yeah. then close and then close. You might have a little bit of oozing there, but I doubt it. And then the last one. We're going to just tuck in, tuck the breast in on itself, and just bring this little piece of bacon on the end out a bit, and then go like this, and just close it up like that. But don't stretch, okay? No stretching, no stretching, no stretching. Darlings, it's almost time to eat. Trust me, this is going so, so well. I'm going to get my gas on. Because this is where you need to be patient. And while that's happening and you're being patient, we're going to deal with our potatoes. So I'm going to make the pan nice and hot, but not too hot. Because all we're trying to do here is we want to take this join. Okay, have a look. These joined bits are going to go join bit down in the pan because we want to keep it together. We want to sew it together. So that's a nice natural um, sealant. Okay. If I count to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable, I'm going down, baby. Down in the pan. There we go. Getting Remember, I don't want you to cook too quickly. My breasts are hot, darling. <laughs> this is my oh, this is my signature. People love my breasts done like this. Okay. Do not make it too too hot because if you make it too hot it's it's not going to seal you want it to almost just give off a little bit of juice yeah. and to start um, to seal okay so I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to keep up with you and wait for you we're going to start our potatoes next at this point so, in so time Jen, you I need right? you all so Jen, Jen so you rather want to sort of warm Thank it you. up in the pan rather than put it into a blistering hot pan as if you were going to fry it exactly Exactly, because if you do that, it's just going to just go flying all over the show. Um, yeah. So if you do put everything in your pan. Do we need any oil or butter in the pan, or is the, the fat from the bacon going to be enough? No, the fat from the bacon is going to be absolutely enough, and my pan is still nice and moist from because I've reused it. But if you're uncomfortable, just you can spray it a little bit of olive oil if you want to. But the thing is, when you put oil into it, what happens is it starts to fry. So just okay. let it render yeah. out nice and slow. 
So if you have a look here on the stove, already it's starting to give off its delicious fat, okay? Mm -hmm. And try not to burn it because you can put everything in this lovely pan. Okay. Um, also, just don't be too impatient, guys, to turn it over too soon because if it doesn't seal, it's definitely going to unravel. Okay, so once these are in the pan, we can drain our potatoes if they're ready and then we're going to move on from that. Okay. I'm going to wash my hands. It's almost time to eat. I see the time has marched on. What can I say? What can I say? I just love having this time together with you. What can I say? I know you're waiting for the winners. You're waiting for the winners, aren't you? Well, you're going to eat. Them. Okay. Because I can multitask, what I'm going to do is just take my potatoes and give them a squish. That's happening. Just squish your potatoes like this. Okay, have a look. You've got a lovely little squishy potato like that. Just squish. Give them a, a squish, but don't hurt them too much, okay? Just a nice little squish like that and pop them back in the pot. And what I'm doing here is I'm just opening it up so that it's going to be ready to receive a bit of butter and olive oil. And, of course, I'm going to use the savory rice uh, Robertson spice mix. And I'm going to once again let that just happen passively on the side again. And we're not going to turn them over too soon. Okay? So I'm squishing. Well, crisp quite nicely then. If that was your offer, yeah? Yes, yes. I just want to get like, I want to rough it up a little bit. You know, when it's rough around the edges, what happens, Pete, you get those crispy bits, like when you do roast potatoes. Yeah. Aha. Look at that. That's looking so good. So I'm going to stick my stove on and I'm going to just give them a good old uh, squeeze. I'm going to just give it a good old squeeze of olive oil. Now, this olive oil actually almost forms part of the salt. So I'm actually, I'm not too worried, you know, if it looks like it's a lot. I love it. Um, you can add salt and pepper to it now if you want to. But I'm using the savory rice mix so that it has got a, quite a, a bit of salt in it, which is really nice. Yeah, so you won't need any other I'm going to No, no, you don't want to put anything else. It's got everything you need in there. So I'm now going to let this start to, to catch. And I'm only going to put the butter in near the end because you know why? I want that butter to cling to it, okay? okay. Look at all the fat that's coming off our bacon. Look at that. Look at that, baby. Mmm. Jordi, don't you want to give me the savory rice spice if you don't mind? And you can open it for Mama if you don't mind because you know what? I'll break my nails. I don't have... I don't have that. Look at that. You know, food talks to you. Like Peter, you know, like the corn gives you that beautiful aroma and a smell. The minute when you start shaking your pan and it starts doing this. Um, cool. I've got one of these. This is good. Oh, thank you, Jordi. Um, and it starts moving. It's almost telling you it's time to, to switch. You can switch it over. I'm going to put about a one and a half teaspoons of this into the potatoes. And I'm going to let it do its thing. Okay. Okay, Jen, can you just give us a, a quick recap of where we are now so that everyone is so we're on the everyone's on the same page? Same page. Okay. So what I need you to do is have your bacon wrapped breast already in the pan. By this stage it should be wrapped and slowly uh, rendering out the bacon fat. You should have your potatoes should be cooked to pork tender. So when you put your knife or skewer into it, it should give and be nice and gentle um, and I've got some olive oil in here so I've drained them I've squished them I've got some olive oil and I, you, whatever seasoning you would like to add to your potatoes you're very welcome I've got the savory rice um, from Robertson's and now I'm letting this go just nice and slowly okay I don't care if they don't have any shape or form I want the texture and I want the flavor because that's going to go mm. underneath everything yeah. My, my, my chicken breasts are moving beautifully. So I'm going to just pop, oh, look at that. The seal, the seal, look, you yeah. see the seal on that? Isn't that gorgeous? And I'm just turning it over to give it a tiny, tiny little bit of color um, on the top. And then I'm putting those into the oven. Okay. So that's again, oh, just, just so the reason why 
you you put the the, the, the kind of wrapped the, the the gnarly side down so that it almost so the bacon doesn't yes. unravel it it seals nicely on the bottom there and yes. the bacon is not all going to come undone and flop open when it cooks absolutely wow this is going to be so delicious now you can ju i just want a absolutely. little bit of color a little bit of color on this okay and my pan is still not burnt so i'm telling you now my tomatoes are going in here i'm going to rob this pan of every drop of flavor these are going nicely just giving them a nice little shake around as i say food talks to you when it's ready it'll it'll tell you it's mm. time to turn okay look at that i'm going to just pop that i've sprayed this with a little bit um, of olive oil you can put any kind of uh, food spray on it non-stick of course oh this is can you see how these breasts have plumped up yeah it's too glorious for words they have plumped up. That's going to be my hero. Oh, look at that. Okay. So mine are ready. And um, I'm going to just switch my pan off. Just loosen this up a little bit because I'm going to be working on the sauce before you know it. So here they go. Have a look. See, they're all ready. They're nice and plump. They're beautifully um, sealed on the bottom. So nothing's going to unravel. And I'm sticking them into my 180 oven. Okay, are you ready? Are we going one, two, three together, uh, Mr. Morris? Can you do me a favor? It was that load shedding we had. Just check my um, oven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, you know, that's the thing with electronics. But I've got one of these things that fly like an eagle. But some, what happens with load shedding, it just knocks my gas oven out. Um, it just messes with everything. Yes, it's off. This is off. The oven, I'll put it off. It is off. There we go. And it messes with your computers. Can I put it on now? Thank you. Okay. I can hear the humming. Oh, yes, I'm a happy Jenny now. Okay. So by this stage, you should be putting your breasts into the oven. Gordy, can you hear the oven? Yes. Oh, yes, I can feel the heat. This oven heats up like before you know it. And it's already had some time in the pan. How far are we, Pete? Are we in the oven yet? We should be in the oven by now. Yes, I, I think I think that uh, uh, Fabio and, and Rene seem to be, um, I don't know, um, um, lagging behind a bit. I hope they've caught up by now. But everyone else seems to be uh, on the same page. Okay. Oh, the potatoes are really taking on gorgeous color. I'm not going to mess with them. I'm leaving them. Okay. So now in this very same pan, because I cannot resist it, I'm going to get my sauce going. And while the sauce is cooking, I'm going to make my little half avocado. I'm going to add an avo. Did you know that an avocado is not a pear? That's just the shape. An avocado is a berry. Did you know that? Uh -huh. It's a no. berry, and it's, and in and fact, it's very in fact, nice too. They're considered um, actually uh, to be aphrodisiacs, aren't they? Oh, yes, they are. <laughs> I love them. I feed them to my husband for breakfast, lunch, and supper. Yes. <laughs> it's all part of their phallic shape. <laughs> that is why they're considered aphrodisiacs. Yes. But I love the it's, idea. It's called the testicle. It's called the, it's called the yes. testicle fruit. That's right. And because they're soft and squishy. Because of the shape. Um, yes. No, because they're hanging down. Look at this. Look at this. They're hanging on the tree. Funny shape. It's a funny one. It's got a round one. Look. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Whatever. But they are known yeah. as an aphrodisiac peach. And it's the shape. Yeah. It's the, the, it is the, the shape like testicles. Yeah. It's not me being funny or silly. No, no, no. It's good. Did I, make so I, I love the in the same pan, um, Jen, because because everything you've cooked in you know, the, the all the, the residue from the dip cell and the mushrooms and the yeah. garlic it's in there, plus the like little it. bit of bacon fat. So the sauce you're about to make is just gonna be compounded with all those flavor elements and it really is gonna be fabulous. So really Absolutely. guys, if you, if you can 
keep using the same pan list as Jenny says, unless you burn your bacon, um, try and keep the same pan because it really just adds, adds a whole flavor dimension to the dish. So now, I'm just gonna, the tomatoes, what we want to do, we want to heat the olive oil. We want to get our tomatoes um, in to the pan um, and we want right. them to blister, okay? Mm -hmm. We want them blistered and wrinkly like me. Um, let me see if my pan's hot enough. It all, it's going to do like this little merry little dance, but I can see some gorgeous smoke coming off it. I can hear it. Mm -hmm. I've got the so rest no of... To... Jen, there's no need to cut the cherry tomatoes. Just throw them straight in the pan. Straight in the pan, sweetheart. I love them when they're whole like that because they just pop in your mouth. Yeah. They're gorgeous. I've got my garlic quite big, okay, because... A quick okay. question: How long do we? How long are the, the, the breasts going to be in the oven for? Just give or take. The, about eighteen to twenty minutes. Um, it depends on the size, and also remember we've right. had them in the pan already, so they've had a little bit of yeah. cooking happening. Um, I, I definitely. Oh cool. my goodness! If you could just smell this garlic, if you could smell this garlic, Pete, and this mm. rosemary, I feel sorry for you having to sit there on your no. own and eat nothing. No, I oh. have to say that I, I don't have the benefit of smell everything. But it really looks absolutely yes. gorgeous. Those potatoes are looking super fine. Yes, the article stuff. I'm now going to, I might as well just while that's happening, um, I have found, I have found what I might do is, I might, oh, look at this. I've got some rockets that I have picked in my garden. Geordie, bring me a little handful of baby rockets, lovely wild rocket. Um, I love growing things that self-seed themselves. So they come up at the right time. You know, when it's a season, they haven't, yeah. thank you, darling. I've washed this. I'm gonna just use this as a base um, to this. What I might mm. uh -huh. Look at that, the skins are starting yeah. now. To... So we have a, an, sorry, Jen just interrupted. We have an interesting tip from Alan here. Avocado comes from the Mayan yes. word for Texas. From? From the Mayan, Mayan word for I told you, you, you thought I was being vile. You see, no, no, people I saving my bacon running, Alan. <laughs> you see, I know things. <laughs> okay, Pete, I'm going to add some butter now because this butter is mm, mm, going to give me a lovely sauce. And I add the rest of the butter now to my potatoes. Boom. Okay, so you're not. And you're now not I'm going to add the cream. Okay, so, so the, the, the butter is not necessary to fry the tomatoes, it's more to like, thicken and make the sauce more luscious. Emulsion. Exactly. 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 So now I'm going to just um, get a pair of scissors and put my cream in. I'm going to just pop the cream in and what happens now is it's going to reduce okay you have the beautiful creaminess the acidity you've got the garlic you've just got oh look at that now you can decide how do you want your sauce do you want it greatly reduced or just slightly reduced I like it to hug I want it to hug the tomatoes but doesn't that look absolutely magnificent Pete I think it looks gorgeous okay so this is so my just hats. Me, they're creamy and they're buttery before you get to your avo, um, Fabio has finally yes. managed to, to get close to where you are. Can you just recap your, your tomato yes. sauce? What's happening in the pan then? Okay. You don't leave so Fabio. what I've done is, uh, no, Fabio, we can't leave you in the cold, darling. Um, so what we've done is I've got um, some olive oil, put the tomatoes in. I just got them to start blistering. I went in with the garlic, nice and rough. Then I put in... Um, the rosemary became beautifully fragrant. Then I put some butter and I've now added the cream. If you have a look in the pan, you'll see the cream. The minute, I always call it that volcanic lava look, when the bubbles cover the whole surface um, of the pan, um, that is the time to switch it off because the pan is hot. It's going to continue to reduce. And often what I like to do is just squish one or two of them um, so that the juice really gets into the pan like that look at that so this this cool. is ready this is so ready to 
to go onto the chicken. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm. Mm. Like. Taste it needs a little bit of salt. And we're ready to go. And I think while the chicken is cooking, Pete, there's lots of housekeeping you've got to do. We've got prizes to give away. So if you want me to quickly do the avo salad with the burrata, um, yes, you can do that. Or you can go the other way. Yeah. Should we do that quickly? Yes. Okay. Because so I'm just well, so let people lovely. Up while we make our avo salad. I know they're dying to know. Now, do, okay. which, do, you, do you have a... So and do you have a preference um, about which avo you use with the with the with, with the, the, the rough skin or the, the smooth green one, the smooth skin? Do you do you have a preference? Do you know, Pete? To be perfectly honest, I love avos in any which shape and form. I, I make the most beautiful chilled soup with the with the with the has oh, because it's as I say, it's buttery, it's creamy, and it's got a lovely flesh. Um, I love the fruata, um, which is delicious, the green ones. I like them all. I, I just, I love them yeah. all. Just look at this burrata. Can you see? Be. Can you see, oh, Peter? Yeah. That is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Hey, all that creaminess. Oh. I'm going to just pop that over the top Creamy and lick my too. fingers and wash them. Mm -hmm. Aren't you jealous, Pete? Oh, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the one with the light green skin, the thinner skin are easier to peel. I sometimes find the, 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 the dark easier. skin is a... Is a is, I end up with more on my hands than I do in the bowl. I, I much prefer working well, that's your, with, the, yeah. with, the, <laughs> with the thin ones. Yeah. With the thin ones. I'm right, going to actually just steal a couple of my tomatoes. I'm going to put some of those over the top. Um, lots more olive oil. Like so. Mm. Look at that. Oh, add an avo, that's baby. Mm. And th that's the avo salad. That's going to be... Mm, isn't that gorgeous? It is. Um, and and I I'm going to quickly disturb my potatoes. I said there's some lovely crispiness going on in the pot there. Is the potatoes are looking heavenly. Oh, these are so perfectly ready. Really Look at that. Oh, I'm done. My potatoes are done. How are we looking, everybody? Yay. Oh, look at that. She's going off. I've got a little bit of parsley left, which I'll use just to pop into the pan with that. And then, Peter, you can get on with your housekeeping, my love. Okay. Well, um, look, I, I think I think that's why we're, we're we're looking good at the moment. Um, I, I think with with the okay. possibly the exception of of, of Rainier, who's just taking his cigarette out of the packet, and Fabio, who is yet to unpack his box in the first place. Um, just kidding, work. Yeah. Um, don't know <laughs> really getting Christmas left behind by the guys. You really do. I know this is Women Month and you're trying to make the, the women look good. The fact that you're cooking for your women is fantastic. But please, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to stick with the program. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to take them to the team. We are not making us look good. We're only getting two people held behind and both of them are guys. I really, guys, you must, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to go into this. So look, let's, let's, uh, let's have a look. I think, I think, um, we can, um, what have we got? I'd love to you see. So we've got some some thank yous and some bits and pieces that we can do, which I think we can attack to a little bit later. In fact, um, I don't know if maybe now might be a time to actually, if we can, uh, possibly talk about Superthon. So um, it is a fantastic initiative in Cape Town. I'll tell you a little bit about it. It is a, it's the, it's the, the it's the dream of a fantastic chef who gets, very little attention for what he's been doing behind the scenes. He doesn't like the attention. He doesn't do it for the attention. Vainan Dubussi um, runs a, comp a, a fantastic outfit, uh, Extreme Cuisine, a, a very big and very good catering company in, the, in Cape Town. And during the lockdown, he decided there was definitely a, a gap in, in what was happening in, in terms of in terms of feeding programs and stuff in, in, in Cape Town. And, and it wasn't just... COVID related, you know, everyone seems to think that all these feeding programs are a direct result of the economy closing down. But in actual fact, half of the people that Extreme Superthon have been feeding starving long before COVID. So it is a sustainable uh, model that he has built called Extreme Superthon. And what basically he does, he has a number of chefs, me being one of them, who lend a hand 
who volunteer for free our time and we go and we peel vegetables and we make soup. So we have donors from all over the Western Cape, some fantastic farmers who send us truckloads of vegetables, some corporates who've come on board and we make um, week long um, big, massive pots of delicious and healthy um, vegetable soup. And then we, we, we it's a long process. We, we pack it down into one kilo blocks that we freeze and we vacuum pack. And those blocks get distributed uh, via various NGOs throughout the Western Cape to people who need it the most. And they have a nutritious, beautiful um, a cup of glorious soup. Thus far, we have managed to serve over half a million cups of soup since the beginning of lockdown. And I think we might have a little video here for you to see a little bit of what they're about. Extreme Superthon came about in early April 2020, just as the COVID-19 pandemic had broken in South Africa. It had been put together because um, our founder, Vaynan Duplessis, had been handing out soup before and he had run out of soup that he was giving away and he phoned up a couple chefs and asked us if we would help him with a really great idea which we all thought was um well, we all thought it was a great idea was getting a thousand kilos of veg from the market and we were able to produce 2,000 liters of soup on our first cook and that did not last very long and we realized that South Africa had a pandemic, not only with COVID-19, but hunger was the problem too, and we were gonna have a starving nation. Each one of these packets behind us feeds 60 people. That's 60 cups of soup, 60 cups of soup from one of these bags, and this is what we're all about, trying to reach 67,000 cups of soup this week. All our soups are um, MSG free, um, halal, and we are catering to the lowest common denominator, which happens to be a vegan you know as chefs it didn't matter to us whether we were doing a five-star plate of food or we were doing the humble cup of soup um, the same love and attention is going into both and that is what we're doing as a product that so we realize that as a NPC a non-profit company the only way to keep going is to keep beginning funded by the South Africans who can afford to and foundations from around the world So there you go, folks, Extreme Superthon. If you'd, if you'd like to help out, if you'd like to make a donation, there 100 Rand can keep someone alive for a month. Please go to their um, Facebook page, um, banking details and de details how you can donate to there. It really is a fantastic uh, 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 movement to support. And if, if you're a corporate or if, you're, if you aren't able to donate money and and you have some produce or you you have something else that we, we think we could use. You know, we've we've had donations of a truckload full of noodles. We had a fantastic donation of a of, of, of packs of sweets that we we're able to give out to kids. So if, if anything, uh, if, uh, it's 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 great to be part of the part of the solution. And and when you see the light. Um, in someone's eyes when they get a steaming cup of soup, particularly in this nasty winter. And it's, it's, it's not just about the nutrition of a cup of soup. It's the fact that, that, that people know that someone else out there cares. And I think that is all part of us solving a greater problem than, 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 than just the COVID. Um, so it's a great thing to be part of. And if we'd love to have as much support as we can. So I think we're, we're about to, before we go back to Jenny, who, who's just about ready to plate up, remember, of course, before um, that we do have um, our plating competition, you can rate Jenny's plate if you'd like. But we all know that food does not exist unless it appears on Instagram. So if you want to win a fantastic prize, you must put your photograph of your dish on Instagram with the hashtag live cook channel and you stand the chance of winning a case of Simon Sucre Chardonnay. And I must tell you, I can vouch for the fact that it's damn fine wine. So it just, it's very dry in here. 
So we have that, and we have Jenny will announce our win of our super win competition a little bit later. So, um, and I think before we, we do crack on with Jenny, she's just about to take her stuff out of the oven. I think we have another word from our fabulous Avocado Growers Association. The South African avocado industry is a world-class supplier of avocados, with the majority of avos being grown in Limpopo, Mpumalanga and KwaZulu-Natal. The main season runs from March to November. Excellent stuff, Jen. How are we looking? How okay. glorious do those look? Mm. And well, have to say, the spice is actually rather nice. They look good. They really well. Thank you to Robertson's for providing a, a, a fantastic flavor solution to, to a dish which was, which was going to be great, and now it's just taking it to a whole other level. Another level, baby. And look at this Avo salad. Um, I've got those lovely big buttery wedges on the underneath, some homegrown gorgeous ricotta, not ricotta, what you call the stuff, rucola, a, a burrata, which I burst open, and I just stole a couple of these tomatoes because I don't have any fresh tomatoes. So this is almost like an avoca prezica something, but it's going to be very, very tasty. Chicken is like so ready to come out of the oven. And I'm ready to plate. Are you ready for me? I think we are, Can Jen. I do this, um, and for those of you, for those of you who are going to take pictures of your plate, and you wonder who's won that fantastic case of uh, of Chardonnay, you can uh, tune in tomorrow um, to the Pomelo Show um, on SAFM. It kicks off at one o'clock. I think they'll be announcing the winner at about half past three. But uh, one of our media partners who love interviewing the chefs and keeping everyone abreast of what we're doing on Live Cook Channel. So that's SAFM tomorrow, Pamelo Matani, Matani show. Fantastic magazine show, great music, uh, loads of food, loads of fat happening stuff. And the winners will be announced, the Instagram winner will be announced tomorrow live on the radio. All yours, Jim. Lovely. So, okay, so what I'm going to do now, Peter Pan, is I'm going to take these out. They're stunning. All the cheese and all that ooey. I'm going to just turn it around so you can just see how it's just so giving. Look at that. It's oozing. They have, and they, they haven't oozed that much, Jen. I mean, the, the, the little cheese is leaking out, but it's not, it's not a disaster. That's nothing drastic, no. is it? No. That's the best part because when it hits the hot pan and everyone's eating, you come behind and you scrape it. That's like the and chef's... You know, uh, get it, yes. Yes. And I think also, I think so that's, I was if, anyone thinking, thinks, if anyone thinks, I was going to say, if anyone thinks that their, 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 their chicken is oozing a little bit too much, don't worry. Those, those crusty bits on the pan are definitely mm. the, the best thing to eat. Oh, yes, without a doubt. Best. The best, best. So how do you plate? How should I plate? I'm going to go with the biggest breast. I'm going to use my potatoes like a um, – I'm going to use my – Potatoes like a, a, a um, one of those push me up a push things up that just rest to yes yes cross my heart so we're yes. going to um, yes we're going to lift and separate so I'm gonna I'm actually gonna put this on the base and I'm going to you're, you're showing your age it's I'm a very very old oh. It looks like a hair, but it's not. It's a bit of mozzarella. It's a good mozzarella, this, because it's like a wire, you know, souple. Okay, yes. so like that. And Pete, I'm going to, oh, this tomato sauce is just literally so delicious. I always want to take bread and wipe the bottom of the pan out with yes, that. Because now, this is just real, this is home cooking, baby. Yeah. And then the tomatoes, I'm going to just... I'm just going to let them fall over the side. Um, I want some more of the sauce. Oh, the sauce is just so, 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 so nice. And then maybe, mm, mm. I've actually got a bit of pesto in my fridge. Can I use it? Why not? Go on, Jen. You know you want A little want bit to. of fresh rosemary. Can I use it? I do want to because I, I put it on that. I can, I'm not going to because you don't have. When you're not looking, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> So, Pete, just very, very simple. Simple plating, yeah. nice and rustic. 
um, look at that ooze. Maybe uh, I could do with another potato, you know. It looks like I, I, a. I, 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 it looks very tasty. You know, it's it's one of those things. It's it, uh, everyone always says we eat with our eyes, and it's it's one thing to have beautifully garnished plates that look all ethereal and 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 like some symphony of flavors. And but agreed. But that plate just looks. I, I want to dive in. I literally want to leap into the screen and. Just, Get that chicken breast, and oh, yes. I can imagine that easy oh. mushroom filling must be absolute. And as that oozes all over those crispy potatoes, what a stunning dish, Jen! What a beautiful, beautiful dish. And I have, I have juice. As you will, should have some beautiful juice at the bottom of your pan, and you can just don't waste oh. it. Waste not, want not. Enjoy. <laughs> Well, folks, it's been, before we round up, it's been a fantastic night. And these evenings are made possible by the fantastic support we have from people like Food Guru. Food Guru, who have been revolutionizing the restaurant space um, right in the middle of COVID and have been, were the four thinking yards ahead of when restaurants could get back and how they could support the restaurants and how they could make the dining experience better. And they've just taken their whole involvement in this to another level. And now with their new application, foodguru.menu, you can now have food in your home cooked like this. You can now, next time we do this dish, this, this episode, you can book your seat at the table with foodguru.menu and you can buy your tickets. You can book to cook through Food Guru, food guru menu. They continue to add strings and feathers to their bow that make them the premier food platform in this country. Right, Jen. I think okay. earlier we made prizes. that we have some prizes for our super women. Um, and oh, for yeah. those of you who've been waiting now to your prizes, I think, Jen, maybe it's time to, to put them out of their memory or to, to fill them with joy and rapture. Let us know who has won what. Absolutely. Please. Okay, so from the Live Cook channel, I have a voucher for two, two portion, it's two four portion meal boxes, and that goes to Verna Fenter. Well done, Mama. Beautiful. These boxes really are good, amazing. Yeah. And then from Bungalow Living, a beautiful table setting for your cook alongs to Sasha Griffiths. You are going to love it. And there's a wonderful virtual experience. It's a date for eight with Team Orange Events. And that goes to you, Rachel. Rachel Evans. Well done, darling. Enjoy it. And then from Kathy Brower, um, English Consulting. This is the one I want. It's an online business or life coach se uh, session. This is going to take you forever. You're going to love it. And this goes to Sulfa Kasim. Enjoy it, darling. I'm sorry that it's you and not me, but anyway, I wish you well. And then from Janine Vinneman, ombre ring. Oh, my goodness, darling. Look at me. Sterling silver. It's a sterling silver tube um, setting with a beautiful combination of stones. And should I keep you in, in suspense? Okay. If your name is Giselle and it's Dennington, this beautiful silver tube goes to you, darling. And then this should really be going to me and my old man, but never mind. We've been married, married for 38 years. He won't miss it. From Boschendal Estate. I love Boschendal. Two nights stay for two in a garden suite. And Cecile Hopkins, pack your bag, baby, because you're on your way. Enjoy. All those lucky people, Peter. Fantastic. What groovy prizes. I want to be a woman so I can enter these programs. You don't, <laughs> guys never get cool prizes. You just... Oh, uh, never mind. No, as long as as long as everyone's having a good time, and um, thank you, Jen. This has been a fantastic evening. For those of you who don't forget, next episode you can book to cook through Food Guru, and Daily Dish will deliver your 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 your, your fantastic parcel. We're going to be cooking with a young talent from Johannesburg, Chef Cabello Sigone, who's going to be doing a lamb tie green curry. Very very talented young chef. Very dynamic young lad, full of laughs. He's a great entertainer and a superb cook. I think it's going to be a stunning episode. So remember to book for that on the 16th of September. Book through foodguru.menu. Um, and, and we look forward to seeing it. If you've loved tonight, please tweet about us. 
Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know about it. Tell your family and friends how fantastic an evening you've had this evening. Um, and we look forward to, to more of these episodes with you. Jenny, um, I cannot tell you yeah, again how much I love working with you. It's an absolute pleasure. You're an absolute dream to work with. You really are. Oh, you, you get better at this all the time. We have cooked together on cooking shows for probably 15, close on 20 years now. And more, you crazy. just get more, yeah, you just get more and more polished. And it is an absolute pleasure to oh. watch you cook. I really love working with you. Thank you so much. And for being our first Super Bowl. Thank you, For man. being part of a fantastic week that we pay homage to. I mean, it's, it, it, it's great that we've got someone like you on our show. Thank you very, very much. And, of course, before we sign off, folks, I must say good night. But before we do, we'd like to say congratulations to Barbara Elchov, who's uh, – uh, one of our co-founders, whose brainchild this was. Happy birthday, Barbara. I hope you're being suitably spoiled. I know you're being cooked for by the boys tonight. But happy birthday to you, and also enjoy the rest of Women's Month. Good night, folks. Good night, folks. Enjoy the rest of Women's Month, and we will see you next time on the Live Cook Channel. Good night. Two different varieties of Evos are grown in South Africa. Has type dark skins and green skins. Has type Evos have thick pebbly skins that darken as they ripen. Green skin Evos have thinner skin. The South African avocado industry is a world-class supplier of avocados, with the majority of avos being grown in Limpopo, Mpumalanga and KwaZulu-Natal. The main season runs from March to November. Extreme Superthon came about in early April 2020, just as the uh, COVID-19 pandemic had broken in South Africa. It had been put together because um, our founder, Vaynan Duplessis, had been handing out soup before and he had run out of soup that he was giving away. And he phoned up a couple chefs and asked us if we would help him with a really great idea, which we all thought was, um, or we all thought it was a great idea, was getting a thousand kilos of veg from the market and producing some soup from it. We were able to produce 2,000 liters of soup on our first cook and that did not last very long. And we realized that South Africa had a pandemic, not only with COVID-19, but hunger was the problem too. And we were gonna have a starving nation. Sustainability has been one of my main driving factors and goals. People going bed hungry in this country has always been a major issue. Um, the people that have has been conditioned in their own minds by themselves and by others not to see the need. Um, we can look at it out the way our neighborhoods are laid out, what we are exposed to on a daily basis. Uh, I've been in a very fortunate position where I have to drop my staff off at one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the mornings, and I go into the neighborhoods that not everybody has the privilege to go into. Um, and with COVID, um, the, the surface, the face of those neighbourhoods changed drastically um, and you could see the, 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 the dire need double overnight. Um, the schools closed so a lot of the younger kids weren't getting their school meals. Some of them that was the only meal they got. So there's a lot of things and people to blame and a lot of things to go that went wrong but I think the biggest problem is, is everybody's blaming everybody and nobody's doing anything. Um, and I think that mindset changes where the people in glass houses stop throwing bricks and actually start taking those bricks and all that negativity and turning that negative energy that they're projecting out to the world into a little bit of positivity and start peeling an onion and cooking something. Food we're preparing is very simply soup. Um, the soup is coming in from the market at the best possible price we can get it for. We are doing tomato soup, we're doing 
normal potato soup, we're doing bean soup, courgette soup, and all our soups are um, MSG free, um, halal, and we are catering to the lowest common denominator, which happens to be a vegan. And, you know, as chefs, it didn't matter to us whether we were doing a five star plate of food or we are doing the humble cup of soup. Um, the same love and attention is going into both. And that is what we're doing as a product. Um, and our food preparation is hygienically clean. The people arrive, um, you are scanned in, temperatures are taken, you are sanitized, you get cl given clean uniforms. And only once you've done that are you able to go to the kitchen and work under a very sanitary environment. Each one of these packets behind us feeds 60 people. That's 60 bags of soup, 60 cu cups of soup from one of these bags. And this is what we're all about, trying to reach 67 thousand cups of soup this week yeah and uh please help us donate it uh, we're looking at 67 being the number so 67 rand would be great 670 rand i think i said this earlier on an interview 6.7 million would be even better and 67 million would be fantastic no no we take donations no, no matter how small or how large we're going to have a great lineup of chefs and celebrities throughout the day we're going to come and peel some potatoes and do their bits and we're going to get their opinions and see what they think of how this whole system works. Medela Day was an amazing day for us. It was our launch of our YouTube channel. Um, we were also able that that exact that week we upped our volumes to for 67 minutes of kindness. We decided we'd do 67,000 cups of soup, which we, were, which we were able to reach on in that week and, and we were able to hand that out for Women's Day. We uh, were able to get a thousand sachets of hot chocolate from Syro Coffee. We also had some pastries from Sagra, a thousand of those, which we were able to kind of give the less fortunate um, our idea of a high tea. Um, so we gave them out to abused women homes where the ladies there were amazingly grateful for what we were doing. Um, and I think they had the best time. We, myself and Tharon, who works with me, we actually went into District 6 to hand out hot chocolates and pastries. We had a fantastic day with Sally Philander. Um, we also got awareness out about our produce, our products, and what we're doing and we're able to raise funds um, to continue going. I think that for us is the most important part is that we realized that as a NPC, a non-profit company, the only way to keep going is to keep beginning funded by the South Africans who can afford to and foundations from around the world. Yeah.